uh, now it's time to begin. So let me uh, introduce Michael Ali. Dr. Michael Ali is VP of Engineering Operations for Saratech. It's an engineering service company located in California with expertise in MBSC, PLM, CAD, CAE, and NCAM. And prior to joining Saratech, Dr. Ali served as a CTO and CEO for multiple global companies, including Harman, Omega Engineering, Ranger, and Jaguar Land Rover. And prior to this role, he held management and engineering positions at Ford, General Electric, <clears throat> Reseller Polytechnic Institute, NASA, and NIST. He received a PhD in computer and uh, systems engineering for uh, Reseller Polytechnic, his master's in mechanical engineering from Stanford, and his bachelor of science in mechanical engineering from Princeton. And without further ado, Michael, I leave the stage to you. And can you, yeah, you are already sharing your screen, so that, that's great. OK, thank you, uh, Stephanie, for the introduction. And um, thanks, everyone, for joining me for this presentation today. So we're going to be talking about uh, interface uh, control documents, uh, how they're generated, and uh, how to link them to PLM bomb. Um, just to give you a quick outline, I'm going to go through a definition of MBSC to make sure we're all uh, in alignment, uh, talk about how interface control is usually visualized. Um, then I'm going to go into how to work from the model in Capella uh, to get documents uh, out, uh, how to link those to PLM, and then status and next steps and lessons learned. So starting with the definition, um, I use the INCOSI. Uh, definition, International Council on System Engineering definition of uh, system engineering, which is the formalized application of modeling to support system requirements, design analysis, verification and validation activities uh, from concept uh, through design development and later phases. Uh, and basically what this means to me is that uh, at every phase of the system engineering process, uh, your models are really the, the foundation of the work you're doing, not the documents. Those are generated from the models, and that's a key difference from traditional systems engineering. And the nice thing about models uh, is that um, engineers already generate diagrams anyway, and they have tons of uh, useful information. Uh, in this case, this is a, a, a simplified model of a spacecraft. Uh, showing that it's got several subsystems, uh, structure, harness, avionics, payload, guidance, navigation, control, propulsion system, and all those subsystems are connected in different ways and exchange information, uh, matter, energy, et cetera. And that one diagram actually captures the subsystems, it captures interfaces, uh, it does capture key functions and data exchanges, and also scenarios. So in this uh, one, one example, I've shown a very simple scenario where um, the, the avionics uh, system has generated a command to tell the payload system to start collecting data, which is then pulled back into the command and data handling subsystem for transmission back to Earth. So a lot of information uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a nice format. Now, when it comes to interfaces, um, I would argue that they are generally visualized, best visualized, using diagrams and tables. Because if you want to see what's connected to what, it's easier to visually see it uh, or be able to go down a table very quickly and look at a particular component and see what things it's connected to and how it's connected. So even though they're best visualized that way, though, they're typically controlled using interface control documents. And I've got an example of one over here on the right, where basically there's a long list of all the different components and all the different things that they're linked to. Uh, and the nice things um, about diagrams compared to interface control documents is that if you want to verify completeness, if you want to check for mismatches, uh, if you want to add and subtract things, or change things, it's much easier to work in diagrams and tables versus uh, a document like this. But text interface control documents are still needed for viewing the detailed specifications, 
Also, if you need a combined format where you need some text, some pictures uh, and tables. Also, when you're transmitting to outside parties, especially, uh, you need a common format, typically PDF documents uh, for, for um, sending that information out. So what you really want is a combination that gives you the power of that visualization uh, and analysis, but also with the detail and control that you get from, from the documents. And, and the point uh, that I'm making in this presentation is, is that MBSC is really the, the preferred approach because now the diagrams are actually the models that are captured by an underlying data model. And then once you have the data model, you can generate all the documents and views that you need with the key idea being that the data model is the master. It's not the document that's the matter, uh, master. The underlying data model is the master and then you generate what you need to from that model. And the benefits, uh, we talked about them, verifying completeness, much easier to do a visual check uh, when you have views that are derived from the model. Uh, you can also use algorithms uh, because now if you have data, right, you can use algorithms to look for uh, issues or incompleteness or issues in the data. Um, if there are mismatches, again, you can go algorithmically versus trying to walk down through a, a text document and identify which, when things don't line up. And lastly, and probably one of the most important things is when you capture additions and modifications. So as a simple example, um, if you generate an interface control document with the model on the previous page, that's fine. What I show here is that you can add some more things. So in this case, I took the model from uh, the previous model and added on uh, some environmental things about the space environment and the earth environment, uh, and also an interface to a launch vehicle and ground station. And then literally at the push of a button, generated an updated interface control document. Uh, and another example is there's different formats for interface control documents. Sometimes you want them by subsystem, sometimes by interface, sometimes you want a table format, like we talked about earlier. And again, you can get all of those from your central data model. Now it does require code. Uh, you don't get these uh, for basically no effort. But the nice thing is that since you're generating them again, all from the master, they're all consistent. So now let's talk about how to generate these uh, from the model this, that we build in Capella. And there's two uh, approaches that when I researched this that were available to me. Uh, one was this tool called M2Doc, which basically lets you take a Capella model and a template and then create a, a document from it. And the other is a set of, is a tool set called the Python Compella uh, MBSE tool set by a third party. And uh, in this case, I actually picked the Python Compella MBSE tool set simply because of my familiarity with Python. I'm already a Python programmer. I'm familiar with that tool set and I'm able to get started very quickly. Uh, so I didn't really look that deeply into M2Doc uh, other than to realize that the Python was a better choice for me. And the way this works is that to do this mapping, you're starting with the diagram. And uh, what you have to do is convert that to an internal data model. So um, what you're really trying to do is, and you can imagine that, that this, this looking at the diagram, right? There's subsystems. The subsystems sometimes have subsystems. Uh, there are functions. Uh, there are interfaces between functions. There's interfaces between components. And so the trick is iterating through this diagram and pulling all that information out into a flat table structure that you can then interrogate and do different things with. And that's really the bulk of the work. The bulk of the work is actually uh, pulling that model into a table form that captures all the interconnections between the components that then you can then uh, work with. And again, the way we chose to do that was with Python and we used um, Jupyter Lab which is basically an electronic notebook uh, with a web browser interface. Uh, the nice thing is that it gives you the power of Python uh, in a package that lets you document things. Um, you can run code, uh, you can capture screenshots. Uh, and because of that work of converting that diagram into the table is very much trial and error is what I found. Um, I, it was, it's definitely, 
what you definitely want to do is be in an environment that lets you iterate quickly. And that's what this Jupyter Lab uh, lets me do, uh, was basically try different things, quickly see what the output looked like. And if it didn't work, go back and try something else and then kind of document things as I went. So the solution architecture uh, was pretty straightforward then. Um, first step is to read the diagram and the Compella MBSC tools pretty much do a good job of that. Then you have to convert the diagram to the data, uh, like I said before, and that's where the work is really uh, iterating through that diagram and pulling out all that information and inferring all the connections between things. And then lastly, the code to output the data in whatever desired format uh, you want. Now, once you have that uh, information, the, the question becomes, how do you make it useful in other contexts? And one we think that's important is one where you want to link the bomb with interface control. And I'll just give you a simple workflow where let's say there's a design engineer who has a bill of material uh, in his uh, PLM tool, his product lifecycle management tool. And now, uh, something has changed uh, in that bill of material, and you want to know if that's going to have an impact on any other subsystem components, uh, any interfaces of those components, and how do you do that? So the workflow would suggest that the design engineer is going to make a change uh, and then capture that and then request a review uh, for impact by a subsystem owner or a systems engineer who will then identify all the potentially impacted subsystems and then review the change for impact. And the trick is that the design engineer is going to be in their CAD tool or the design tool plus the uh, PLM tool, whereas the systems engineer is going to be working in the MBSE tool. So the question becomes, how do you link those two? How do you connect those two? And you'll see what we're proposing here. So let's take a closer look, uh, going back to the same model we've been using. That hasn't changed. But now what we did was create a, a simple build a material structure uh, for the different parts here. So we've got like the avionics subsystem that's here. Uh, that's got this command and data handling subassembly that's made up of a main logic board and some memory and some power chips and sensors. So that's the setup that we've just sort of created a sample um, system and subsystems that we can use for this demonstration. And we've got prices and sources, all the typical information that you a find in a bill of material. And that's just a close-up view. If you know, it's hard to see some of the different things, but, uh, and same thing here, close-up view of the different subsystems. So there's two approaches, again, uh, that, that we looked at. Um, the tool we're using for PLM is Siemens Team Center. And uh, Team Center has an interface to Capella uh, through something called the system workbench. Uh, that's what they use, what's called trace links uh, that let you connect items in the bill of material to items in uh, the, the model. Um, what we found though, is that it's really meant to be used more by systems engineers. It's very centered on the system engineering tool side of things. Uh, it felt high effort to us because of the links that you have to create are very, it's manual and you go one-to-one. -one. And it's very tightly coupled, whereas you have to use this integrated team center um, system modeling workbench slash Capella environment. Um, we developed an approach that we think is more, uh, it uses team center and assumes that most of the engineering team is going to be in team center uh, as opposed to being in the model-based system engineering tool. Uh, we think it's relatively low effort. And I'll show you an example where you're filling attributes in the table, should be mostly cut and paste. It leverages the existing Team Center workflow capabilities. And also, most importantly, it doesn't require tight coupling. Uh, you can use Team Center and Capella as an example without using Siemens System Modeling Workbench uh, integration. So it's compatible with creating a service offering that we're interested in doing. So you've got a loose coupling, low effort, and lets the engineers stay in the tool that they're most comfortable with. And the way it works is that um, in the PLM tool, which is Team Center, we actually add uh, a couple of um, attributes to the bill of material. We add one for uh, the 
structure mapping and one for interface ports. And I'm gonna give you an example of that. So um, what we wanna capture here is that in the bill of material, uh, whatever part you've got, it should be identified with the lowest level subsystem that it's tied to. So in this case, the main logic board, we know is part of the command and data handling subsystem. So we capture that, uh, et cetera. And then in this case, um, if this main logic board actually ties to an interface port that's part of the command and data handling uh, subsystem, uh, and in this case, we're saying it does, then we put that here. And in this case, we're saying that the main logic board is actually connected or has some relationship to the command and telemetry interface port that's part of the command and data handling system. And you can see that uh, on the diagram here, here's the command uh, and telemetry uh, data that's moving back and forth uh, and across this port that goes into the command and data handling subsystem. And so the connections are, uh, this is our way of mapping now the bomb to our structure model uh, in Capella. So as an example now, if someone's going to make changes uh, to that main logic board, so going back to the workflow, um, you can say, well, if you change the main logic board, you know that main logic board um, uh, is part of command and data handling subsystem, which is connected to various subsystems. And also that main logic board has a relationship to this command and uh, telemetry interface port. So now you can tell that uh, you can see here are all the subsystems that interface to the command and data handling subsystem, right? We know there's a connection to the communication subsystem. There's a connection to the payload subsystem and to guidance and uh, navigation and control. So these are all places that you'd want to look to see if there, are whatever, when you understand the change to the main logic board, you'd want to know if there's an impact, you want to check for impact to these subsystems. And similarly, when you look at that particular port, you're going to actually see that there are interfaces directly between command and data handling system and the specific interfaces to the uh, guidance navigation control software and the payload software that, again, you'd want to check to make sure that whatever change was made there, uh, does it have an impact on those things? So next steps. Um, what we can see that if the customer is using a PLM system, we can semi-automate that workflow that I just told you about. Because now that you've made these connections between the bill of material uh, and the, the model, you can have a workflow where now the design engineer again design, defines that change. Um, the system can then identify the map subsystems and any ports basically using those attributes in the table. And that information would then go for a review by the, to the systems engineer, who would then identify any potentially in, impacted subsystems. Again, that's automated because now the system can, can look to see, well, if these are the subsystems that that component is, or has a relationship with or ports it has a relationship with, it knows the other subsystems that need to be checked for impact, which are then reviewed by that systems engineer and then can make the necessary updates or changes. So this is a way to sort of tie everything together into a workflow that we think will be useful for, for most engineers. And we can capture the information at each step uh, as a package. So we can capture the change, uh, what those subsystems and ports are, and then add on what the, the final listing is. And from, from our point of view, uh, Saratech, where we offer engineering services, if you have a customer who says, okay, I have a PLM system, I have a bill of material, I'm less familiar with MBSC, I'm less familiar with uh, interface control and how this would work, we can offer that as a service. Um, so if the customer sends us the material, we can assess, uh, create uh, the, the models and documentation, and then as changes come through from their side, we can do that systems engineering work uh, as a service for them and maintain it. And then lessons learned, um, certainly extracting that information into the data model takes a lot of trial and error because you're effectively learning the data model. Uh, there's probably some opportunity for Capella developers to provide Python friendly interfaces to, to pull this data as opposed to people writing code to have to extract it. Uh, definitely using JupyterLab uh, with the Compella MBSE tool allowed for rapid prototyping and documentation. 
Uh, and I also believe that uh, we've shown this is a very powerful demonstration of the benefits of a model-based approach versus text-based because all the things that we did <coughs> generating uh, you know, different outputs from the same model, uh, modifying the outputs based on changing the model, connecting that model to PLM, those are all things that simply aren't possible uh, with a text-based interface control uh, methodology. So overall, we think that um, this has been a successful uh, demonstration of what MBSC when, and, and model and working with a tool set can get you. And I'll just leave you with that uh, Saratech, if you're interested in this uh, and want to pursue it further, uh, we'd really like to hear from you. We'd like to be your partner uh, in figuring out how to make this work for your particular uh, problems. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Michael. Um, we've got one question, uh, and 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 if you've got some questions uh, for Michael, don't hesitate to uh, enter them in the Q and A window. So I'm gonna display the first question uh, from Vincent. Uh, can you please re-explain the rationale to divert from a, a team center team center SM, SMW hard linked approach as opposed to the Saratech alternative? Uh, MBSC architecture being the source of truth, wh why not benefit from a formal trace link in PLM? Yeah, okay. Uh, thanks for requesting that clarification. So uh, we're not saying uh, that one is, is wrong. Uh, we're saying that in context, they can be a little, uh, it's just a, a difference in context. So um, the the Siemens approach we feel is very MBSC tool centric. The, the work is driven from the system engineering tool uh, by the system engineer who has to make these connections. Um, contrast that to a typical project where you'd probably see uh, a much larger number of design engineers than you would system engineers. So, uh, with our approach, one benefit is that the work is more on the design engineer because they're in the bomb. They're adding these attributes and filling them in as they go. So you don't have one system engineer who's trying to go and every time somebody, you know, adds parts, changes the bomb, they're going back and changing these tra trace links and updating them. Uh, updating them. Uh, the other thing is that uh, it's that tight coupling. So for this method to work, the trace link method, you have to have this integrated uh a PLM MBSC environment because you know the the data has to be uh, right available right that the bomb has to be in the same place as your MBSC model so they can be connected. Um, so that's that tight coupling that again if if you have it fine if, but if you don't there's benefits to working in a loosely coupled environment. And lastly the effort um, as I showed you um, just adding these attributes right for our method to work. Uh, rather than trace linking, you're actually just filling in two columns, right? And you again, you can uh, allocate that work out to the 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 bill of material owners uh, to fill in these. And a lot of it is just straightforward copy paste, right? I mean, most sub assemblies are organized by subsystem, so most of the time that mapping is going to be pretty straightforward to just simply cut and paste very quickly. Uh, the ports, what you'll find is that there aren't that many cases where a part will map to a port. Generally, you may keep it up at the assembly level, and like the, but, but in some cases where it's important, you will, and, but you don't have that many uh, to, to enter in manually. So I think that's the key here is that uh, if you have a loosely coupled situation where you're thinking that you want to put more of the work onto your design engineers, um, we think this is the better way to go. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna bring up another question. Um, which are pros and cons of using the PA level of Arcadia Capella instead of the EPBS level, uh, where, where EPBS has a configuration item that can be linked to the bomb? You know, I don't know the answer to that question because I'm not that familiar with the EPBS level. I uh, know enough about Capella to know it exists. But um, I started with the PA level because that's my training is to start with the, the structure model. Okay, thanks. Uh, next question. Uh, can you extract the requirements from, from the requirements add-on and use it in the ICD with Python? 
I don't know the requir what the requirements add-on is. Stefan, can you tell me a little bit about the requirements add-on? I'm going to answer if I understand what it is. Yes. So um, the, if you go on the Capella website, there are a, a list of add-ons. Uh, some of them are open source. Some of them are commercial add-ons. And, and one of the open source add-ons, which is uh, one which is the most used by Capella users, is, is a requirements uh, viewpoint add-on. And what it does, uh, it adds um, requirements data structures to the Capella data model and also the ability to import uh, requirements uh, from tools like like doors or, or other requirements tools i see so uh i guess the question would be i don't know if the capella mbse tool set has an interface to that requirements module right i mean that's where i started from is the py's uh, capella mbse tool set that already can basically pull in a diagram from capella and and parse it into a a, a, a sort of basic data model that then I could then add to. So the question I would have back is I would say uh, possibly if the requirements uh, in that module are available through the Capella MBSE tool set. Okay, thank you. And next question. Um, have you tried to implement tables directly in Capella? No, I worked strictly from the diagram to start with. Okay. Next question. Have you used the Python based interfacing also for FMU generation and, and connection to simulation tools like MATLAB, Open Madrika, et cetera? No, I didn't. I think that's a really good point. I mean, once that information uh, is in Python, right, once you have it available to you, you can certainly leverage uh, all those linkages. Um, I did use uh, to output the interface control document, I did generate a Microsoft Word document which leverages the Python uh, package called DocX. So once you're working in Python, you actually have access to all those really powerful libraries that are out there uh, to connect these things. Okay. Next question. Um, interfaces starts uh, from MBSE, uh, operational system or, or, or um, local and requirements also, I guess, uh, logical and requirements also. H how do you couple with PLM from the beginning uh, in PLM? Yeah, uh, really uh, interesting question. So um, if you think about it, uh, when you've got the operational scenarios, right? So if you've got operational scenarios, you generate a diagram. So the diagrams are certainly available. You can certainly pull them in using that Capella MVSE tool. Um, the trick would be, when the di does, how do you map the diagram to the bill of material? So everything in the PLM is built, you know, around the bill of material, which means it's very part and assembly centric. So if there is a mapping that can be had between those things and your operational scenarios, uh, then you can make that connection. Probably you probably more go at the system and logical diagrams would be more like that. So if you don't. You don't have to have a structure model. If you have a logical model though, and you know the mapping between your logical model and your bomb uh, components, then you can still do exactly the way I said, you could think of uh, another column that would call logical model mapping, right? And you would map the components to the elements of your logical model, then you can do the same thing. So um, it, it all goes to uh, how you map those things together. Okay, thank you. Um, so we, we don't have any more questions in the q and I've, I've got a couple of questions, actually. Um, I, I don't know exactly how things are done at the moment in organizations regarding what you are proposing. Uh, uh, my question would be, um, have you tried to, to quantify what, what the uh, ROI with uh, the approach that you are uh, proposing? Quantify the what again? Uh, the, the return on investment or yeah, what, what's, what's, what's to be uh, gained basically? Yeah, um, you know, it didn't, our, our focus is, we, our company, we do a lot of work in PLM. We're actually a, a reseller and supporter of uh, Siemens products. So we do a lot of installation with customer PLM. So our thought is to go work with the customers who already made the investment in PLM because that's a big investment, right? You already have to have that in place. 
um, and then say to them, okay, where are you along your systems engineering journey? And, uh, you know, where would you find and how are you doing interface control? Um, I don't think the, if you've done the investment in PLM, I don't think the additional investment to do this is very much right. Uh, the Capella tool itself is either free or you can get it, the Siemens version, which isn't that expensive. Uh, our coding and stuff is not that that hard to understand and implement. Uh, so I think it can be very, uh, like relatively, it's not the same level as doing a PLM, right? It's not the same level as installing system engineering. It's really uh, just a, a, a layer on top that's for relatively easy to do. And that's again why we try to do it the way I showed with the attributes and things, right? Again, thinking about very easy ways uh, that are very useful for companies immediately because everyone we talk to wants to do a better job of interface control. Everyone wants to do a better job. We think we've got an answer on how to do a better job. Okay, and, and so um, uh, have you have you already had some uh, experience in deploying this approach with, with some customers? Not yet. We've talked to a few. We're getting some interest, but we are looking for a customer who would say, yes, I have a, sub, I have a system. Uh, I'd like it modeled and I'd like to start doing some interface control with it. That's for, and we're willing uh, to go invest with that customer to, to help get you know a real use case off the ground. Uh, we are finding people are, are getting into model-based system engineering. So it's early, early, early stages for people right now. Um, so I think that's the trick. We're just still a little bit of, uh, ahead of people as far as uh, leveraging these tools and learning how they want to use them. Okay, and last question on my side, maybe. Um, uh, ha have you looked into Python for Capella, which is, you know, another library to uh, to um, uh, to basically script uh, Capella models with Python? Yeah, I, I remember way back uh, I came across it, and for some reason I I focused on Capella MBSC uh, fa for some faster in that case out of the two, but I don't remember why anymore. So right. for me, I'd seen it, but I didn't, uh, I, maybe for whatever reason, I just, whichever one installed the quickest that I was able to figure out the fastest was what I was sort of after. Okay. Okay. Understood. Understood. Okay. Thank you, Michael, uh, for Thank this you. Uh, very interesting presentation.